Hey there, this is Flatlander Mike, and this is day two of a uh, track install. I spent three hours yesterday afternoon and a bit in the evening, finished at 7.30, got all four tracks on, and now we're just going to go through the setup. I've already done the right side, front and back, so I'm going to show you how to, how to do this. Uh, you need a piece of flat bar. Every bunch of tracks is different, so... Uh, it depends on what brand you buy. So what I'm going to do is put this flat bar across the top of the back wheels. And that's your measuring point. Reach back there. Okay. So we're going to take a tape measure. Oh, right there. Right here. Yep. Okay. And I'm going to measure from the ground to the bottom of that bar, see the bar. <clears throat> now the spec is 10 and 3 eighths of an inch. And I've got just well, about 9 and 3 eighths. So I've got to go quite a bit. So I'm going to loosen this lock off. It's right hand thread, just normal threads. So I'm going to loosen that. And what I want to do is I want to bring the back wheels up so I'm going to tighten this sleeve this way and that's going to pull it down and every so often I'm going to pull down on the wheels on the track make sure it stays. Uh, as you can see I put cardboard underneath there. Um, I was watching a video and they said it makes it easier because especially on cement makes them easier to slide for the tracks to move. So I'm going to turn this sleeve and I'm probably going to have to go a long ways here. So it's starting to get looser there now. So I'm going to keep going. The other side goes out a long ways also. So. on this. We've got lots of play in here, which is good. Keep moving it. One more turn, and then I'm going to pull down this. I can move it. I didn't move it enough. I'm going to have to get out and push down on Just push on there. There we go. Okay. All right. So I'm going to check it. Put the bar in the middle. Tape measure. Oh, and there. Well, now we've got just over 10 inches. So we're getting close. Okay. So I'm going to turn it in. Got about three eighths of an inch left to go. Okay, so I, can you step you on might. that again? I got my son here today to help me. Okay, that's good. You stepped on? Yeah. Yep. Okay, that, that lifts that back wheel up. So we're going to measure. By golly, we're pretty close there. Maybe just a hair. Too far. Oh yeah, quite a bit. So I'm going to tighten this up so this rubber is just touching here. You should still be able to turn this spring by hand. Okay, so the rubber is just touching. So I'm going to just, yeah, just give it a bounce there. This is good. You're gonna have to uh, break, actually break the tracks in, so everything works together. Yeah, I'm about ten and a quarter, so I'm gonna leave it like that. Um, after a one mile ride, slow ride. Okay, gonna lock that up. Not too tight. Thirty foot pounds as a spec on that. 
and you go for a one mile ride and bring it back and recheck all your measurements. So I'm going to put a little bit of spray on this ball socket here. I'm going to put some on here, lubricate it. And then that's good for now. Okay. Okay, so next we're going to do the track tension. As you can see, it's pretty loose. Now the specs are, with a 33 push, 33 pound push, it should deflect approximately three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to tighten that up a little bit. They will stretch out. That's why you have to take it. Now, the bolts are here, the lock nuts. You want to move this, the ones on the threaded rod. Do not loosen this bolt in the front. That sets on the top of the frame. That sets these wheels and be able to move them. They're set from the factory and they're lined up perfectly. If you're having trouble with derailing, apparently this could be out, so that's one thing you check. Um, but they're set from the factory, so don't touch it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this nut. It doesn't probably have to go that far. Okay, so I'm going to try to see it's tightening up already. So I'm going to give it just a wee bit more. And you should be able to move this with some force. Then that track tension should be just right. So now I can push down and, I'm, and it's moving roughly three quarters of an inch. Okay, tighten the nut, lock nut back up. Put the other wrench on the, here. And I'm going to tighten this up. Okay. Alright, so now we're around to the back. Uh, I've done the other side already. So just to figure out what I'm doing. And I'm going to loosen this lock off. We're going to turn this the same as the other one, but this is really easy. Okay, you got to make sure these are loose, which were loose from the factory. When you tighten this down, it clamps down on this piece here and it stops it from moving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this in. I'm going to shorten this rod because I've got quite a bit of pressure on there. I'm going to give it a little bit of lube here. A little lube. So we want to loosen this off so that there's no very, very, just slight pressure on this rubber, tapered rubber. Okay, so now the rubber is pretty loose right there now. It's, okay, so now I'm going to tighten it back up. Just so we have it's touching. One more. Okay. Okay, you should be able to turn the spring by hand. Okay, and I can. Uh, one thing I forgot to tell you about this: these tabs. These are for uh, anti um, your steering lock tabs which you don't need them on this machine because they're 2015 and higher. Um, so what I'm going to do is make sure this is on the inside. On all the way around. On all of them tracks. And I'm going to tighten this up. About 30 foot pounds. Just want to snug it up. If you over tighten it, there's a chance you could strip these threads, and they don't they warn you about that in the instructions. Okay, so we got that done. I've already done the track tension here. 
I'm going to take uh, the spray and I'm going to spray this ball joint here. We want you to lubricate it. I'm going to lube it in here. And I also sprayed on the, the track tension bolts here, um, the slide. that adjust the uh, alignment just to protect it from corroding so, and that's it for those uh, one more adjustment and we'll go to the front and try that okay so the last thing they want you to do is check your toe in of your machine it's gonna very very um, adversely affect your driving uh, your handling and everything so what I'm gonna do is I got a locking tape measure here and they want you to measure between the two back wheels right at the hub and then the two front wheels at the hub and subtract the difference it should be zero or one eighth maximum so I'm going to put my tape measure between them I'll lock it now I have already done this I'm sorry <laughs> anyway so here we have uh, 48 and just under a half. So I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to measure it. And we are exactly the same. So that is perfect. We have zero. Um, one eighth different. So that's not very much. We have to adjust it. We're going to go to the tie rod ends. Now this is a rack and pinion steering. So it's very, very simple. You loosen these nuts and it just happens that both sides are the same thread. They're both regular thread. So you just loosen this nut off. I put a mark on the top. This is actually got a, you can put a wrench on here if you want or a good set of pliers, locking pliers. Um, so mine was actually towed uh, in three quarters of an inch. So what I did was I back these both nuts on both sides. Make sure your steering wheel is straight. Okay. And then what I did was I wanted to tow it out. So I wanted to bring the front of the track out. So I tightened this up, which pulls on it. And I turned it one turn. Okay. And then check your steering wheel again. Make sure it's straight. Wiggle it. Go to the other side, do the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. Um, turn it in. I turned it one turn. So you want to turn it the same amount. Okay, come back, straighten the wheel, and take your measurement again. It just happened that I moved it the perfect amount. It was uh, went right, right to zero. So everything worked out. Then you go back and just tighten your lock nuts. And done. So I'm going to take it for a blast. Take it for a one mile blast. And slow. 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 <laughs> 15 miles an hour, they're saying. No more than that. So we take it for a blast to bring it back in the shop. And we're going to check to make sure everything's good. So we'll see you on the trail. Well, we went for our one mile, 1.6 kilometer jaunt, and we're going to recheck the angle of attack. So I'm going to remeasure this with the bar, and 
Nine that. Ten and a quarter. Close enough. Okay, the other side. This is called the angle of attack. Oh, we got lots here. We got ten and a half. So, I'm going to have to adjust this one. Heated garage, so everything is all the snow stuck to it. Okay, I'm going to loosen the lock here. Okay, so I'm going to dry it. See, I want to lower that wheel. So I'm going to turn it. I'm going to lengthen the rod. Measure it again. There we got ten and a quarter. Exactly. Same as the other. Okay, I'm going to snug that up. Locking nut. Go. Okay, so the work's done. So we're going to check the back now. There's lots of snow dripping here. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check this. You can still turn the spring. And we're touching here on the rubber, so that's good. The other side. Turn the spring by hand. Pretty close there. I actually think I'm going to just tighten this one up just a wee bit. Okay, and I'm going to lengthen the rod. So I'm going to turn it this way. A little bit of pressure on there, and I'm going to just tighten it back. There we go. All right. So we came pretty close with the angle of attack. So now I'm just going to go around and check my track tension. That's pretty loose. Okay, so we're going to adjust that. So we're going to just loosen this off, track adjuster. And we're going to give it a little more. We're going to check all the tracks. It's just that little joint will stretch that track. That's pretty good there. No, it didn't go too much. So. Okay, just tighten that back up. And I'm going to do the fronts. Okay. Way too loose. a lot of vibration so I don't know that could be the problem the vibration or it could be normal I don't know I've never had tracks before so uh, we did run some deeper snow that was pretty cool I just tighten that up, just not even, well, probably close to a quarter of an inch. Okay. 
to do all four. I put the tracks back on the cardboard again, just so that I can move it around on the cement floor. Pretty good right there, isn't it? Tighten this up. If you just loosen this locking nut a little bit and then turn the other one, you can see how much you're moving it by. You don't want it too loose yet, you don't want it too tight. Instructions say if it's too tight, it can cause premature wear on your bearings. Too loose, you can start derailing, which means the track will come off. So we're just going a little bit at a time. I'm sure it'll stretch out a little more. Okay, so that was uh, our track install. Uh, we're looking at, well, today I've spent probably two hours setting it up taking the road test, coming back and resetting everything. Uh, the only thing I didn't do is recheck my toll. Um, I'll check that at another time. It's probably pretty close. Um, being an automotive, I've done tow in on cars before, so I kind of know what I'm doing. Um, but it's awesome. We went through a little bit deeper snow, uh, just walked through it like nothing. Um, although we just take it, took it down the snowmobile trail, and uh, that was nice and smooth, but uh, went off the trail a couple of times, worked really well. So, um, I guess that's about all I can say is you can't do that in two hours unless you've done 20 of them, I betcha. So, let's uh, just call it a day and uh, we're going to go out and do some more running around. And uh, this is Flatlander Mike signing off and uh, this video will be up shortly.